Hi folks, this is Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today I want to go over the procedure for adding a new locomotive entry into the uh, Decoder Pro roster. One of the first things you're going to want to uh, look at when you're getting ready to do this is deciding which track you're going to do your programming on. So you have an option here of using the programming track, programming on the main, or edit only. So you can actually edit a file without sending anything uh, to the programming track. You can edit a file and send the changes to the locomotive on the main line or on the programming at track itself. Um, there are also other places here where you can do this. Notice under Settings Programming you can select it as well. And this is true for a lot of things in Decoder Pro. There's typically at least two different ways to do just about everything. Okay, the other thing that we can look at, and I'm going to touch on it here, is the programming mode. You can see it's come up with direct byte. The options are paged, direct byte, register, and address modes. These latter two, register and address, are antiquated modes that are no longer used to my knowledge, and uh, they're maintained uh, for backward compatibility with decoders that people might have installed in older locomotives. Direct byte is the most commonly used method now, and uh, it's faster because it goes directly to the CV being written to or, re or read, and uh, just that one, or multiples, and uh, so it's much faster. Page mode, on the other hand, reads a whole page of CVs in order to find just the one that it needs. So it's a little bit slower, but it was commonly used, um, oh, up to around 2000, I believe, something like that. Um, there are decoders still today, though, that can uh, work better with page mode instead of direct byte mode. So if you have trouble with uh, reading a, or writing to a decoder with direct byte, go ahead and switch it on over to page mode and give that a try first. Okay, so we've selected the programming track. We've selected the uh, programming mode. Now let's go ahead and select the new loco entry button. Okay, what comes up here then is this Create a New Loco pane. There are, there are two ways to go about this. One, you can place a locomotive on the programming track that has a decoder in it, and then re-click on this button here and attempt to read the type of decoder that is installed in that locomotive. Now, I say attempt because sometimes this works very well. Sometimes it doesn't work very well at all. Some manufacturers just use a single version number for a whole class of decoders. Um, and when you go to read what decoder is in your locomotive, it might say it's version 7. But you're not going to know which decoder in version 7 um, that it covers. So in order to address these kind of situations, I keep a separate spreadsheet in Microsoft Excel that lists every loco that I've ever installed a decoder in and the type of decoder. And that way, if I ever forget what decoder is in that locomotive, and I've got de locomotives that have had the same decoder in them for 20 years almost, and I tell you, I don't remember what I put in them. To save me the trouble of taking that locomotive apart and figuring out which decoder it is, I go ahead and keep that spreadsheet entry. And um, I think it's a very important thing to, to at least do that. And uh, you can keep a written entry somewhere in a notebook or use a, a spreadsheet somewhere. Okay, so instead of reading the type from the decoder, normally all you'd have to do is click here on this little button and it would go ahead and attempt to do that. I'm going to show you the other way, assuming you know what decoder you've installed. Let's click on Soundtracks, and let's assume that it's an Economy Diesel. Okay. Um, click on that twice. Now, on this last one, Eco 100 Diesel, click only once. If you click twice, it'll jump past it. So live and learn on that one. Okay, here we have the programming, basic programming screen that first comes up. It allows you to enter a roster ID. It can read the address of the locomotive and write it. Uh, 
and you can set other things. I usually go ahead and just skip this. I want to I want to go ahead and open the comprehensive programmer. Now there are several different types of programmers available in Decoder Pro. Uh, there's a basic, there's an advanced, and, con and there's compre. I use comprehensive. It has about all the panes that you'll ever need, uh, and it uh, makes it a lot simpler uh, to work with the uh, with the decoder to have everything out there in front of you to select from. Okay, so right off, the first thing we're going to do then is create a roster entry. So let's assume that I've got a southern locomotive. Let's assume it's an F7A unit and the loco number, let's say it's 4195. Okay, so that's going to be my ID for that locomotive. That's what's going to appear in the roster and it's going to be the file name. Let's go the southern is the name, road number 4195, manufacturer, let's assume that it's a Stuart F unit, and F7A unit here. Now there are other things you can do. Right in here you can set a maximum throttle uh, limit here. You can set it at 50%. And that way your speed demon, op speed demon operators are never going to go above half throttle. You can enter a comment here, you know, that reminder of speed limit, okay? And then you might have something else down here about a, a decoder comment that you might want to enter. I rarely use these, by the way. Okay, then you can save that to roster, and you've created a roster entry. We can pull this down and see that we do have Southern F7A 4195 has been created. So let's pull this back up, get it back in the screen. Okay, so now that we've created that basic entry uh, information, let's go ahead and go to basic programming. Okay, the address we've selected was 4195. And that's going to be the long address. Whoops, excuse me. We'll do that again. And let's assume we're going to have a short address, a two digit address of 95. Now, why would I want to have both a long and a short address in the decoder? Well, let's say you go to the club with your locomotive and you're going to want to run 4195. Somebody else is already there, and they have locomotive 4195. Obviously, you both can't run it with that setup. However, if you've got 95 set up as a two-digit address, you can quickly and easily change the um, CV29 setting uh, so that de it defaults to two-digit addresses, and you can run your locomotive using a short address, the two-digit version. That's about the only reason I ever do that. Okay. Uh, again, like I said, there's often two ways to do everything in Decoder Pro. You can select the long and the short addresses here, or you can do it down here in this drop-down. Either way, it's going to bring it up. Now, you noticed as I've gone through here, things there are some that are outlined in yellow, some things that are orange. Once you make a change that needs to be written to the decoder, the background changes as a reminder. Okay, so anytime that this happens, then you know that something's been changed. Notice over here, user ID. You can enter a, a, a value in these for your own purposes, for whatever you want to do uh, between uh, user ID 1, 0 to 255, and 0 to 255 here. So you might want to have a separate set of IDs for each locomotive uh, that you keep separate from these. Okay. Um, the other thing, let's move on down here. Locomotive direction, normal or reversed. Speed steps, 14 speed step or 28-128. Most decoders now, you're going to want that 28-128. Only very old decoders um, that probably use register mode or address mode um, uh, are 14 speed step decoders. Finally, we have DC conversion. What is this? 
DC conversion means that the locomotive, the decoder in the locomotive, will operate off of either DC or DCC signals. Okay? In most cases, I recommend always use NMRA digital only. Why? Well, one of the things that can happen is if you've got DC conversion enabled and you have a short on the track, that can send a pulse of DC power onto the track. And at that point, the decoder thinks, wait a minute, this is DC power, not DCC. I've got a switch. So it does it and it takes off at super speed. And the first time it hits a curve, it's going to be on the ground or on the floor. So you don't want DC conversion enabled. Turn that sucker off. Turn NMRA digital only on. That way, if you get a short for any reason, the locomotive is just going to sit there and ignore it. Um, when I was working on my friend's Murphy infested layout, and we were trying to uh, uh, fiddle with uh, some track connections, we were creating little shorts. Well, after a while, we went over to the Mosby Yard area, and there in the turntable were four locomotives sitting in the turntable because they felt these little shorts and took off. Ended up filling the turntable with locomotives. So you don't want to do that kind of thing. It, uh, it tends to scratch the paint. Okay, so an NMRA digital only. Now, all of the stuff that I've been entering here is part of CV29. CV29 is called the master variable because it, it controls all of these various functions. Uh, the type of address you're going to be using, the two or four digit addresses, the address format, okay? Whether the locomotive direction is normal or reversed, the speed tech steps, and the NMRA versus um, DC uh, 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 conversion. So this saves you a lot of work of going through and calculating what CB29 should be. And it all does it for you. All you have to do is click and choose and automatically uh, selects it for you. Now, once you've got everything on this page done, assuming you've got a locomotive sitting there on the programming track, you can write changes on the sheet or write the full sheet. Now, in this case, just about everything here needs to be changed. There's nothing in these. If you select write changes on the sheet, only these settings outlined in orange are going to be written to the decoder. These other guys will not. You could also write the full sheet, and it's going to write all of these and these. Like I said, there's only a few things here uh, that uh, are going to be written in addition to these. Okay, But let's say you get further into programming and you getting into all of the daggone sound level settings, or function mapping, or lights, or anything like this. And there are maybe tens, there might be dozens of settings that need to be changed in index mode. You could be sitting here all day waiting if you click on write the full sheet. So in a lot of cases, it's much better to write just these highlighted values to the decoder because those are the only changes you've made while you were doing the programming. Okay. Um, also, you don't want any erroneous values that are possibly in some of these other settings being written out to your decoder. So, just about 99% of the time, unless I've changed everything on a sheet, I only use write changes on the sheet. Another thing you can do uh, once you've written these is you can read the full sheet and compare and see if anything comes back different. Because occasionally you get a bad write. And uh, particularly with it, some uh, decoders and index CVs, you can end up rewriting an erroneous value to the decoder. And by reading it back, you can see that. Um, you also need to be careful because you might get a bad read as well. So I, I tend to check these. Okay. That's about all I want to cover today. There's a lot of other options on here. And we'll get into uh, motor settings and these other things at a later date. So for now, enjoy playing with this over the weekend. And uh, come on back for more uh, programming later on.